Hello everybody, uh, just me again, trying to make up for um, uh, the lack of uh, podcasts last couple of days. Um, I'm sure you've heard by now they've impeached Donald Trump again, this time for attempts to insurrect, basically what happened last Wednesday. Um, I'm not going to really go into any depth, it's not really a surprise, um, I think the Senate's going to wait until after he's out of office to basically convict. Uh, I think part of the reason is because they're afraid of what he might do if they do do that. Um, then again, things can change. Next week's going to be very interesting. But anyhow, um, we'll see what happens. I don't really know what's going to happen I don't think anybody does. It's just insane right now. Anyhow, um, this kid, I'm going to go back to do some personal stuff right here. Um, I got my little $600 thingy they sent, uh, the the um, whatever they want to call it. And I have uh, actually invested in a, a smaller TV. Now, I'm not going to replace the one I've already got, but I'm going to use this one. The smaller one actually put it right next to my uh, desk, and I'm going to be able to do um, watch-alongs better instead of having to twist around and watch something or to, um, you know, uh, try to do something uh, kind of... Uh, and productive. I'm going to try and do that to kind of catch up on things and kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone when it comes to my um, my uh, New Year's resolutions. Um, it has been very tiring the last couple of weeks, and um, I'm just uh, really, really, really. in a bad mood, and um, I really am trying to improve my mood as much as I can. I avoided Facebook as much as I could today, although I did do a couple of shopping things, which is where I got that TV from. The main reason I did that was um, because it was a good deal. It was small enough to um, put where I need to put it. And to and basically also gives me a chance to pl plug up my PlayStation 2 again. And once I get that back in, I'm going to use that. Because it's, it's a little bit hard where my main TV in my room is, which is the 32-inch smart TV, uh, to play it. And I'm going to put this smaller one down by, um, down by the, uh, my desk and be able to move a few things around to where I can actually play it and have a little bit of fun. So that should be um, that should be something that I'll, I'll tell you more about later on when I do get it in. And there are a few other things, but um, but real, reality is is that um, I'm really trying to build something to where I can really um, have something uh, really fun to <laughs> to do besides uh, just worry about what's going on in the world. My hope is after the 20th, things calm down dramatically. I mean, it's not going to end any of the uh, craziness going on, but hopefully some people will realize that... Um, there's more important things in the world than an ex-president who is mad that he's an ex-president, you know. Um, I mean, I, I I know there are a lot of folks who are disappointed he lost, I mean, but it's what it is. I mean, the democratic system, small d democratic system works, um, and he is, uh, he faced the judgment of the people. And he lost. 
that is how it goes. And to me, it's it's one of those things that bugs me is that he says, well, 74 million, how many, ever many million people it was that he claims are not getting heard. Well, 81 million people said they didn't like Donald Trump being president. They wanted Joe Biden. And guess what? Majority wins. Um, and he's had his legal recourse. The legal recourse has not worked for him because they've not found any widespread evidence of any voter fraud nearly enough to affect the outcome of the election. What they have found has been very small, probably wouldn't even affect a city council race, much less a presidential race. Um, But there are a lot of ways we can fix this. First of all, I'm willing to concede that voter ID thing for one simple reason it can lead to different it can lead to a compromise to get things I think that would really help out to get more people to vote the main reason I've opposed it is not necessarily because you know the old of the arguments because I've read some of the stuff that was also part of that proposal for voter ID it included closing more precincts giving uh, giving, basically eroding voter rights and such beyond just voter ID. In principle, it's not such a bad thing if you give people enough time to be able to get the proper, get their IDs and all that and be ready to go. Um, but there was other stuff, and it's it's one of those things that I'd have to go back and do do the research because it's been, it's been going out there for a while. I think it's been almost like eight years since the first um, inklings of voter ID. The, the, my, my feeling has always been this. The actual verified accounts of, of voter fraud, the ones that have actually been proven in a court of law, are so small, in, in my honest opinion, they don't really matter. Uh, it's been out of a billion votes, 31, 31 cases of voter fraud. You have a better chance of hitting Powerball. Well, maybe not that much, but you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than being being seeing voter fraud. But that being said, if the Republicans are willing to compromise on a few things, I'll give them voter voter ID. And here's what I want: first of all, at least three weeks of early voting. Secondly. A ratio of precincts to voters that allows for people to be able to vote on election day with as little as weight as possible. People don't need to stand in line for hours on end just to vote. The easier we make it to vote, as long as they're verified, the better it is for democracy in general. Thirdly, independent, nonpartisan electoral commissions that have the power to not only run elections, but also set electoral districts. That includes congressional districts. Gerrymandering needs to go away. Uh, It needs to be where, instead of being the state legislatures and the courts, it is an electoral commission that sets it based upon geographic areas, traditional geographic areas, to where it is as fair as possible to get the to get as equal a diversity of per district as possible to where every district is almost the same, not necessarily entirely going to be the same because there's always going to be differences between urban urban and rural, blah, 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 blah. But to get it as close as as possible and not have like little stringy, stringy little districts to basically make it to where it's basically blatantly obvious they're trying to take create one district so they can one democratic district so they can make three or four republican ones and vice versa. I don't think gerrymandering is good for the democratic process. I think that it needs to go away and it's helpful for both for both parties in the long term. Also, ranked voting. The reason for that is because we can get rid of primary season. 
We can even get rid of political conventions. And basically it would mean that you'd have all the candidates running at one time. Instead of trying to tear each other down, they'd basically be trying to tell you exactly what they want so that you could basically vote for them. Rank voting would mean you'd have an end to runoffs. It would mean you'd have to have a constitutional amendment to chain, to get rid of the electoral college and just have the popular vote result in whoever becomes president. Now, that I'm looking at it as from being from the Australian voting point, Australian voting system. To me, I think that makes the most sense. Um, I would split, I would, and here's also another thing. I think you should have local elections in in odd numbered years. No sheriff's races, no county commission races, no city races, no mayoral races. They're all on the odd numbered years. So that they're broken down to where you're not having like 5 billion different things you're voting for. Another thing. Paper ballots, paper ballots only. No more electoral vote, no more electronic voting machines, and they all have to be counted by hand. It will be slower, of course, but it will work. In the long term, it will work. And the, mo the most important thing is with these ballots are they can be rechecked to make sure they're accurate. Yes, it'll be slower, the media won't like it, the candidates themselves won't like it, but it will be much more accurate than electoral machines, which are prone, prone, excuse me, prone to be hacked. So, And there are other things as well um, that I've talked about in the past, but basically making it to where we take the politicization of running an election out of the system to where redistricting is impartial. Running the election is impartial. Basically, the only thing the candidate, the part, political parties do is basically talk about their ideas and compare and contrast them to um, the, the opponents, opponents. Now, I've talked about the Fairness Doctrine before. While ideally I'd like to have that apply to cable and satellite networks, i.e. Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. I don't think there would be the support to actually go through that. And plus, I think the courts may not weigh in, in favor of my proposal. So, Because broadcast signals are broadcast over the air. Cable and satellite you have to sign up for. While it's, you know, a bit of a... Maybe splitting hairs there, I can understand why the courts may side allow it for broadcast networks, but not for cable and satellite networks, because you have to sign up for a cable and satellite network. Whereas for broadcast network, you can get it. If you've got an antenna, a TV, you can get it. You don't have to turn it on, but, you know, and all that. But to me, I think that makes the most sense. Um, we got to make sure we don't have this mess again. We have to sit down like adults and decide what's more important. And I think it's just going to take some time. Um, I will say this, though. Um, we have a lot to be concerned about, not just COVID and the political situation. But once this is all over with, we're going to have to deal with rebuilding our economy. We're going to deal with climate change and all of that. So there's a lot going on. We're going to talk about that from time to time. And uh, But also we're going to talk about some fun stuff as well. I'm just trying to find, trying to even out the topics where I'm not just coming on here and depressing the hell out of you every, every day because it gets kind of tiring as well. Um, yeah, what fun that is. But anyhow, um I will say this, though, about uh, the, the biggest problem I see with the next few months. We're going through the really tough phase of this. 
we knew it was coming. Most of the people who followed it, I've, I've been following it, knew that this winter was going to be the tough part. People will want to be out for Thanksgiving to see their friends and family, for Christmas to see their friends and family. And we're finding out that that's really hurt us. And what I hope is, after the election's over with, and Biden's president, he gets on and says, we need to have a frank talk and, and have to where, if you want this to be gone, we have to be willing to make the sacrifices. We could have been done with this. Look at New Zealand, look at other countries, like uh, Taiwan and South Korea, even China. Now, I'll be first to admit that China may very well have fudged the numbers. But Wuhan right now, the cases are dramatically reduced to the point where they're able to go out and have fun. Imagine that. They, can, they have more freedom right now than we do because they're, they've beaten, they've not beaten it, but they've beaten it back to the point where they can have an open society for Chinese for Chinese for China, not much, much less, but uh, for us, since we have had people, unfortunately, who don't see the wisdom of doing what's right, we have had to face the consequences, all of us. That is why we've had to deal with this continuing on and may very well continue on for the near future. But, alas, that is life. So, uh, pretty much that's all for now. I'm going to try and do some more podcasts tomorrow. Uh, the main reason I didn't do as many today was I was actually watching um, Everyday Astronauts' uh, YouTube channel had the test firing of the SN9 Starship prototype. And they were basically all it was was basically they were they had it locked down, and they were test firing the boosters. And I was interested in that and kind of my space geek took over, and I was watching and listening to him go on and on and on, and it made for a nice distraction from what's really going on in the world. And maybe tomorrow, unlikely but possibly, we could see S and I actually do the launch. And maybe land this time, unlike SN8, which did great up until the point where they had the belly fl- go from the belly flop to where it had, was going to land, and the engines conked out because the fuel couldn't get to the pumps because they hadn't quite figured out how to get the fuel into the engine after it had been on its belly to when it went back to upright. Blah 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 blah. You can look for that information on Google or YouTube. Uh, you could look on it on um, Everyday Astronaut's page. You can tell it better than I can. But anyhow, it's getting late at 7.34. And um, that'll be it for now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.